Welcome into week seven of Friday Night Lights. Hard to believe that we're over Crazy. halfway through the prep football season, the regular season anyway. So glad to have you with us tonight. I'm Scott Gross. We've got some big rivalries this week, including the Telegraph, the Telegraph Pass Cup and the City Championship game at El Centro. The Eagles haven't defeated Central since 2017. That was the same year that the Eagles made it to the state championship game, a 45-41 loss to the Milpatis. Trojans. <laughs> That's right. Hey, we'll get to those a little bit later on, but our marquee matchup takes place at Shimamoto Simpson Stadium featuring two teams with only one loss, the Calexico Bulldogs and the Imperial Tigers. Now, despite Calexico's recent success, according to Max Preps, the Bulldogs haven't defeated Imperial in almost 20 years, if not longer. Here we go. Let's head down to this showdown homecoming night at Shimamoto Simpson Stadium. Here come the Tigers looking to claw their way past the Calexico Bulldogs. Dogs looking to get off the porch and do some running. Calexico first drive of the game, second down. Robert Montajano with a little flick of the wrist to Andrew Rivera. Gets out of the tackle, spin, and takes it down. Uh, well, taken down by two Tigers. Down the second and 11. Hand out to Noel Gastelum. And look at him protecting his baby. But uh, taken down by Bo Zinn. Flag was thrown, uh, holding on the dogs. Dogs couldn't make much happen. So they punt on four. Tigers turn to show out. Imperial makes their way down to about midfield. Third and short. Jay Nayala fakes to hand off. Gives it to Lopez on the slant. Jane connection for the first down. Second quarter. Dogs territory. Third and six. Yeah, Ayala, a little lob to Joel Villa. Campos, touchdown Tigers, 7 0. Tigers would get two points with a safety. That forces a punt on third and seven. Ayala is going to go long to Jared Nixon. What a catch. She's got it. No, it's incomplete, defended by the Bulldogs. Marco Esker. Bulldogs try to come back, and Tigers going to take it on homecoming tonight. And that winning streak, Chaz, continues 26 14. Tigers are 6 1. To El Centro now for the city championship game at Eagle Field between the Central Spartans and the Southwest Eagles. The Eagles haven't defeated Central since 2017, and that's when they made it to the state championship game. Opening kickoff is going to be taken by Matai Cervantes for the Eagles. He's going to make a man miss, but put the ball on the grass. Luckily, they do recover. Logan Youngers here is going to hand the ball off to be Cervantes, and he would get cough it up once again. This time, the Spartans would recover in plus territory. Going out on offense, sophomore Luis Jimenez would swing it out and find a wide arpin. Arturo Estrada, who's gonna be taken down hard by his face mask, so add on 15. Now towards the goal line, the Spartans are gonna give it directly to Nico Viesca, who's gonna take it in himself. However, the extra point will be blocked, still six to nothing Spartans. Now let's see how Youngers and the Eagles would respond. Youngers scrambling, and he's gonna roll out and find Andres Lopez, and he's able to get behind the defender for a big gain. The Eagles would march it all the way down to the goal line and go for it on fourth and goal, but Youngers could not get rid of the ball and is sacked. Turnover back to the Spartans. Southwest would keep a close scoring late in the second quarter to make it a 12-point game going into halftime. However, the Spartans would turn it up in the third quarter, running away with this one 42-6 to win their fifth consecutive El Centro City Championship. And you know what? We are just getting started here. Coming up from highlights from Yuma, the Kofa Criminals, or excuse me, the Kofa Kings and the Yuma Criminals. There we go. Plus, it's the battle for the Telegraph Pass Cup. There it is. Antelope and San Pascual. We share if the Warriors get to claim it for the first time ever after this quick water break. It has a special microfiber in the middle and ShamWow on the edges. That combo gives you the pow for no more streaks, no more wasted time, no more unhappy light. It's the fastest way to dry your car. Anyone can dry their car in 60 seconds. You're going to easily reach the top, then quickly dry your side. And you're going to be spending the money. 20 40 $50 on car washers that are going to last a few days anyway. Shampoo. You can use your shampoo for all your outdoor furniture. Or roll it up and use it for your RV or your boat. And it's easy to store. Shampoo sells for $59.95 and free shipping. The Call now, and it's only $29.95. And you're also going to get the car hooker. Hook your shopping bag. Even your purse will be secure. Is your takeout food being taken out? Just clean up your act and hook it. Flip the bottom part, and you got a secure smartphone holder. Supplies are limited. If you want that hooker in the car, a $20 value, free. Here's how to order. Call 800-626-8134 or scan the QR code. And if you order now, you get the free car hooker. Supplies are limited, so call 800-626-8134. Call now. 
Hey everyone, Emeril Lagasse here, and I'm so excited to tell you about my biggest air fryer yet. Introducing Emeril Lagasse's Dual Zone Air Fryer Oven with dual sided cooking chambers. Now you can cook two different foods two different ways that finish at the same time. Enjoy juicy grilled burgers at the same time as air fried french fries, broiled savory salmon at the same time as roasted asparagus. The secret is in the quick sync technology that matches the cooking times and settings of each food, so they're programmed to finish at the same time. But watch, remove the center divider and it transforms into a large 25 quart capacity oven. Now you can try Emeril Lagasse's Dual Zone Air Fryer Oven with free recipe book in your home for 30 days for just $14.99. But wait, we'll automatically upgrade you to his deluxe cooking kit and one-year VIP protection plan absolutely free. Complete with everything you need to cook Monday to Sunday family size meals. Plus, ask how you can get free shipping. This offer will not last, so order now. You're going to love it. I guarantee it. Good news. FNL, sponsored by Southwest Turf and Rock. More rivalries to get to with Antelope invading Winter Haven, going toe to toe with San Pasquale for the Telegraph Pass Cup. It's been a one-sided affair with Antelope since the cup was reintroduced in 2016. The Antelopes have hung on to it ever since that first win. So the Warriors were looking to claim the cup for the very first time. Was tonight the night? Let's find out. Here we go to Warrior Field with those San Pasquale Warriors hosting the Antelope Rams for the battle of the Telegraph Pass Cup. And there it is, looking glorious. First drive of the game, it's going to be Elias Espinosa saying, get out the way on a five-yard carry. Big fella with a nice carry. The Warriors would punt though, so first drive for the Rams. And Train Figueroa is going to go down, sacked by three different Warriors on the tackle. Two plays later now, Figueroa back to pass. This time he's going to get dropped again, but it's going to be by Jaden to some foe. However, the Rams after this would march down the field and they're going to give it to Romelio Silva on the end around, and he is going to take it around to the far side of the field for the touchdown. 8-0 Antelope after the two-point conversion. Next possession now for the Warriors. Chance Gatley's going to fire to the near side, but he is going to be intercepted by Ozzy Martin, who takes it all the way back to the house. A pick six for the sophomore. We'll go to the second quarter now. After we have a couple celebrations, Antelope up 22 zip, and Figueroa is going to go deep for Martin. Wide open for the touchdowns, and the Rams would roll the west of the way, retaining the cup with a big 56 to nothing victory. To Curly Cope Memorial Stadium at Doan's Field, the Yuma Criminal Cheer Team getting the fans pumped up. Demons from Dice are looking to get back to 500. Meanwhile, the Crims looking for win number two on senior night. Opening drive of the game, Dicer quarterback Kai Brown fires over the middle and it's picked. Watch this, Andrew Mosqueda, great concentration. Mosqueda exercises the Demons. Crims band loving it. Crims offense went three and out. Demons six foot five quarterback Kai Brown decides to take it into his own head. Nope, you're not going to get me. No, get out of the way. Just, just leave me alone. People just flying off of him. It's a 40 yard touchdown. Hey, why not a fan hug at the end? Demons get the two point try and lead eight nothing. Crims get the ball back. Reggie Antoine under pressure gives it right back on the strip sack. Demons are going to capitalize and they're they're going to give it to Javon Christmas, who's going to get a nice little gift at the one yard line, a score. The extra point good, 15 nothing Demons. Crim's looking to answer, Reggie Antone slings to his right find Shamar Morales, and he is off to the races, down the sideline, one man to beat, and he's gonna be pushed out inside the 10 at the Demon 7, start of the second. Same drive, Antone to the far side, finds Ashgrim Escada. Trust me, he's on the other side of that referee. He caught it, comes down with it. Crims missed the extra point, it's 15-6. Crims defense played well all first half. Here they force a fumble. They forced two turnovers and had a goal line stand. The offense was slow to the party. Crims fall to one and five, and they fall to Dicer by a score of 50 to 27. Senior night for Kofa. There's one excited player, Justin Skilling, celebrating with his family as the Kings welcome in Odyssey Institute. We begin in the first quarter 
second and three for Kofa from the 37. Jose Galavis taking the snap, and it's going to be a keeper that Galavis takes for about an eight yard gain. Kings into Minotaur territory. A few plays later, third and 12 for Kofa, back on their own 47. Galavis is going to avoid some contract, staying slippery, bounces towards the sideline for a King first down. Unfortunately, it would end in a punt. To the second we go. Minotaur is up 7 0 here. Game's still pretty close. Third and long from the King 20. Galavis taking the snap, throwing to a player. It's going to be uh, Isaiah Luna with a nice catch, uh, but he's going to have it poked away. I guess that was a play earlier, right? A little little loss in this one. It's going to be an interception for Kofa. They're staying in this one. Alexander Comer. Uh, is, then it's going to be a Comer, a big return that puts Kofa inside the Minotaur 5. Eventually on first and goal, it'll be Jason Edwards. Fighting through some contact for the touchdown. We've got a one-score score game. However, Odyssey would pull away in the end. I mean, when I say pull away, really pull away. They win by a score of 42 to 6. Our football coverage is going to continue all weekend long, including Sunday night's NFL match between the Kansas City Chiefs and the New York Jets. Is Taylor Swift going to show up? Well, who knows? Anyway, here's NBC's Football Night in America crew with a preview. Maria Taylor alongside Devin McCourty and Jason Garrett. And week four brings the Kansas City Chiefs to take on the Jets on the road. And the question is whether or not the Jets defense can hold up and stand strong against the Chiefs. I love the Jets defense. They're really good on all three levels. The one thing that they need to do is to disrupt the game and change the game by taking the ball away. Yep. And I don't know that they've done that quite so much. They've kept the score down. They've played good defense. Don't get me wrong. But they need to start making some of those game-changing plays. Going forward, and especially playing the Kansas City Chiefs, they know if they don't turn the ball over, the Jets have no chance. So I think it's going to be very hard for this Jets defense to slow down this offense. All right, we'll see you for week four of Football Night in America. Our coverage will begin at 7 Eastern on NBC. Can't wait. Hey, Friday Night Lights rolls along, and it wouldn't be Friday Night Lights without girls' flag football, plus our play of the week. And Out of Town Scoreboard will be right back after this quick TV timeout. My parents were, are for sure the people who have inspired me the most. I knew that I needed to get my education. I wanted to be like my mom and I wanted to work. Even though my dad didn't go to college, he's super hardworking. He started out working in the fields and he's made a lifelong career out of agriculture. And now he gets to travel and he gets to do a lot. And so that also really instilled hard work in me too because he was like, anything that you do, you're putting your name on it. So you want it to be the best. Yeah! Carl's Jr.'s new Big Char Chili Burger is big on char broke flavor. Big on smoky sweet heat with a whole charred Anaheim chili. And big on savings with a Big Char Chili Combo for just $7.99. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Ford Bronco Sport. Equipped with 8-inch touchscreen navigation and 5 standard GO modes designed to go over any type of terrain. Plus, standard 4x4 capability. Because when we are unidos, we are stronger. Get a 2023 Ford Bronco Sport at 1.9% APR limited term financing plus $500 retail trade assist cash. This week on FanDuel Sportsbook, we're offering an exclusive odds boost to new customers. So you can turn... I like those odds. ...into... I love those odds. ...and little dubs... ...into big dubs. But it's only happening now. Make every moment more with FanDuel Sportsbook when you boost your odds right now. Whew, you big, man. New customers get exclusive 30 to 1 odds on the Colts or Ravens. Bet $5 to win 150 Stay informed with News 11 and KYMA.com, your trusted source for local, national, and international news. As a proud member of the Yuma community, we bring you the news that matters most. Whether it's local events, weather alerts, sports, or in-depth reports, News 11 and KYMA.com have you covered. We provide the most accurate and up-to-date news coverage. Stay connected with your Yuma community with News 11 and KYMA.com, where news comes first. Yeah!
Carl's Jr.'s new Big Char Chili Burger is big on char broke flavor, big on smoky sweet heat with a whole charred Anaheim chili, and big on savings with a Big Char Chili Combo for just $7.99. Well, it wouldn't be Friday Night Lights without a little flag football. Chavs, Chaz uh, gives us a rewind from some action in the Imperial Valley on Thursday. Let's go to Eagle Field now with the 5-4 and four Vincent Memorial Scots hosting the Holtville Vikings who are still looking for their first win of the year. Last play before halftime, Gala Cervantes is going to be back to pass, but her flag is going to be pulled by Camilla Sanchez. And the defense for the Vikings holds it at 8-0. First drive of the second, now Cervantes to throw again, but her pass is going to be broken up by Alicia Villa Gomez. A couple of plays later though, Cervantes to the air, she drops a dime for Valentina Lopez for the touchdown. The two-point conversion makes it 16-0. Next Scott possession, it's going to be Cervantes to Lopez again for the touchdown. Vincent totally rolling here in the second. And the pair would connect for yet another touchdown, their third of the game. And yeah. They keep it going, but a creative play here from Holtville. Mia Navarro is going to find Angie Beltran on the double pass, but it would be Vince Memorial coming out on top with a big 32 to nothing shutout. Now to Cal Jones Field, for the six and five Central Spartans hosting the six and four Imperial Tigers. First half, Giselle Cario is going to drop back and she is going to connect with her receiver across the near side. After a nice move, that's going to be enough for a first down. A couple plays later, Cario to throw again, this time right up the seam to Addison Clark. How about that catch? That's another first down. However, they would turn it over on downs. So next possession, Amber Miranda is going to throw to the, her left side and that's going to be Azul Amador, after that move, it's down at the one yard line. So that sets up this Nux play. Miranda's gonna go right back to her center. Emma Islas for the score, six nothing Spartans. Next possession now on third down, it's gonna be Cario out of the shotgun again. She's gonna take the snap and fire right back up the seam. It's gonna be complete but short of a first down. Fourth down now, and the Tigers gonna give it to a direct snap to Addison Clark, but she is going to be stopped short of the line to game by Jalea Connor. That's a turnover on downs, and Central will just cruise the rest of this one, winning 18 to nothing. And now, FNL Play of the Week, sponsored by All Play Synthetic Lawns and Landscaping. Our Play of the Week, don't do it, Scott, but what we're going to do it. You may dislike us, for you just you just can't get enough of this one. Look at Dysert's Kai Brown, six foot five, doing his best Cam Newton impersonation, forty yard score. Criminals just bouncing off him. We have a, an honorable mention. Uh, check out the interception by Andrew Mosqueda. Uh, you're going to see it in slow motion. Just how much concentration went into this. Those are our two. Uh, again, honorable mention. Look at Andrew pulling it in. Those are our plays of the week. Let's take a look at our out-of-town scoreboard. Uh, Brawley in a makeup game versus Scripps Ranch due to a storm. Uh, they lose this one by a score of 32 to 19. Holtville wins on the road at El Cajon Valley by a score of 29 to nothing. Yuma Catholic was looking to stay undefeated, and that they did with a dominant 31 to nothing victory over St. Mary's. Vincent Memorial played Palo Verde in an absolute back and forth one, but they came out on top 28-21. Cibola Gila Ridge, very close games on the road. The Raiders lose by a score of 30 to 24 to Paradise Valley. Gila Ridge lost 14-13. They actually had a chance to win it with uh, under 15 seconds left. They were down at the three yard line, could not get it in. Let's go to our helmet props tonight. I'm going to go with the Imperial Tigers. They're six and one. I'll tell you what, David Shaw, you've done a great job with this team after losing a lot of key starters a year ago. They gave Calexico the business. I'm going again. with Yuma Catholic and running back Tate Ford. They were dominant on the road, winning 31 to nothing, but Tate Ford winning on and off the field, working with Teen Lifeline to help prevent teen <laughs> suicide this week. There you go. There we go. There you go. Yeah, well, Nash Ott also had a great day today, 279 through the year, two touchdowns. Here's today's best. Uh, we take our victory formation and send it out to you, a tip of the cap to our viewers tuning in, our GM Dave Miller, News Director Ernesto Romero, and the whole Friday Night Lights crew.